Peace and welcome to the New Black Knowledge channel. Thanks all those who could join. Uh, we are back again. We went to the foundation and the people who would know so we can get the answer. And I'm going to go as far as this and begin to show the screen so you can see that this ain't no smoke and mirrors what you about to see that you ain't never seen before so here is the screen that is shared here is my email here the subject as can be seen is one timothy question mark thomas drew this communication is between us and the Newark Public Library who would contain the records. Let's see their response before we get to the actual documents that you ain't never seen before. So the library writes, I found the two articles you mentioned over the phone. Obviously, we knew about the articles as well as another that appeared on July 19th when Drew was acquitted. Acquitted of what? We shall see. The Newark Evening News referred to him as Thomas, not Timothy. There goes our first one. Was his name Thomas? Was his name Timothy? Was his name Drew? What was it? Let's see what the records say. So we'll go down further. As you can see, we went and we paid for it. And what did we get? Let's take a look. I'm going to make this big and we're going to read through the article. This, so all of those date hounds and wanting to know and about your leader can be found in the June 27th. 1916 issue of the Newark Evening News about one Timothy Thomas Drew. Can this be seen? Can this be seen? Yeah, it can gonna, be seen. And don't we're going to read the... this together. We're going to read this together. The headline says, could Ben Bars still sat in jail? Egyptian adept student is finally released by Judge Pilgrim, but on bail of $1,700. Buckle up, folks. You want it the NBK way, you're going to get it the NBK way. Primaries, not our words. But I'm going to take my time with this one. Because in this article are the words of Mr. Drew, and we're going to find out about him. So, Dr. quote unquote, quotes added by me, Thomas Drew's miracles are many. Let's go. Dr. Thomas Drew. Advertising as an Egyptian adept student who has been performing miracles in his mysterious chamber in an attic room at 22 School Street for several weeks, sat most of this morning in a cell in the fourth precinct. This is before he was noble, lock up and wondered how he could effect an escape. Of course, he has twisted and broken such bars with one hand, has shattered great iron locks, and has brushed away handcuffs with only a smile and a muscle twitch. But they were his own bars, locks, and handcuffs. This guy, Dr. Thomas Judy, Egyptian adept, was a fake magician. 
Yo, Danny, I put the um the uh Professor Drew picture there just just so people that have never seen it before. So we'll get to that. We're gonna read the article because people have seen that picture before. People ain't never seen this. Never, never. Shall I continue? Y'all want me to continue? Put some ones in there just because I like seeing it. Welcome, Bullis Gotti, and everybody else. It's about to get real. Y'all done tuned into the right one. Y'all don't y'all don't ask for the right ones. Not our words, their words. All right, let me continue about noble, oh, excuse me, Dr. Thomas Drew, the Egyptian ad. I was just kidding with the ones, y'all. I just wanted to do that one time. That could stop. It was a joke. <laughs> All right. The professor was also noticeably worried over a bail of $1,700, which had been fixed by Judge Pilgrim to injure his appearance before the grand jury when he is wanted to answer two charges. One is for pretending powers of clairvoyance, and the other accuses him of what? Selling medicine without a license. Do these tactics sound familiar to people in 2019, your conscious them? So he is in court and in jail for, let's keep track now, pretending powers of clairvoyance. So he was a magician who was going around with the power of clairvoyance? Let's read further about Dr. Drew. And the other accuses him of selling medicine without a license. That is called uh, patent medicines, and those were in the medicine show, which we talked about in our Black Magic, Black Power, Nobu Juali, the ad that you see where he is escaping from ropes like uh, Jesus, was also slinging medicines later, so he kept it up. It was a medicine show. And magicians and medicine shows go hand in hand. I repeat, all you need to do is go back and watch The Wizard of Oz and look at the guy who came through town. He had on a turban and he was selling miracle elixirs. He also ended up being a wizard. Is Noble Drali the wizard? Let's continue on to find out. That guy, y'all remember the scene? The guy came through, he had a turban, he had some cape on, and he had some crystal ball, right? <laughs> Let's read on. Information gathered by Detective Schrader and Bauman of headquarters shows that the professor had done a land office business in medicine and was waging a campaign to obliterate all illness from his neighborhood. Sounds quote unquote noble, right? He had also given some very remarkable advice regarding prospective marriages, investments, and whatnot. All right. A tie. Uh oh. Listen closely. Let's get a visual picture of how Dr. Thomas Drew, the Egyptian adept, uh, medicine man, magician, was looking before he was noble. Attired in a loosely fitting, multicolored gown and with a brilliant purple hood covering his head. Not attired in fez or turban or anything like that. Before he was noble, his shtick was, once again, attired in a loosely fitting, multicolored gown and with a brilliant purple hood covering his head. Y'all ever remember how the Undertaker used to come to the ring? Picture that. Y'all remember how the wizard looked in the wizard? Picture that. Y'all old enough to remember Dungeons and Dragons? Picture that. This is before he was noble. Shall I continue? Let's do that. Professor Drew, who is an East Indian? That's what it says. With 
Virginia as his birthplace. I thought he was born in North Carolina. I thought he was born in North Carolina. Virginia will be important. Please remind me, Alan, so I can get to what was going on in Virginia. Got you. In Virginia, East Indian with Virginia as his birthplace. Virginia told of his wonderful second sight powers last night when he was visited by detectives. He advised Schrader to invest his million dollars as planned and said he would be repaid threefold. Hmm, let's go further. It cost Schrader a dollar for the information. Despite, we'll look at the business card later, the announcement on Drew's cards that he operated uh, gratis, which means free or no cost. So a marked bill was given him. And later, Schrader and Mrs. Hughes, a police woman, acted as his wife, revisited the mysterious chamber and had the professor tell again of his marvelous powers that excuse me, alas, that also, excuse me, cost a dollar. So he had to pay for it. The marked bill was given to change for a $2 note. Let's keep going. And let's see what the guy with the purple hood and the gown was also doing. With that evidence, the detectives placed the professor under arrest and took him to the fourth precinct with all his paraphernalia and medicine. After being placed in the cell, the prisoner said he was a finished scholar in the art of breaking through bars and didn't really expect to spend the entire night in the lockup. This gentleman who they took in wearing a gown and a purple cape who said he had the power of clairvoyance is now, or who said he was an Egyptian adept, is now sitting in the cell telling people that he could break through the bars and he wouldn't be in jail all night. Let's see if he did that. Of course, the professor had a lot of other really clever tricks that he wouldn't do, wouldn't do for the lone dollar. But other visitors to the mysterious chamber had seen it all. Like what? For instance, when dinner time grew near, the professor enjoyed a meal of eight penny nails, eating nails in a jail cell if his audience was sporty enough to pay for the iron. Then he resorted to miraculous powers of healing to make indigestion impossible. Scores of children in the neighborhood of Newark, it is said, witnessed the nail meals of the professor. So, Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept with the miracle medicine and magician who walks around the hood and the cape and a hood for children would eat nails and bend bars. Let's see what else. He was four hour day. He right? The professor worked only several hours each day, the two hours preceding noon and from six to eight o'clock at night. He ate the nails during the twilight hours before he was noble. Professor Drew said he learned, all right, folks, this is where we pause. This is where we, you know, this the part, Alan? This the, no, it's a couple parts and we get into it. I need everybody to pay even more attention because I believe we're going to get to it soon. Let's see where all this magic comes from. Professor Drew said he learned his work in that great country of India. I thought he went to Egypt. 
Oh, so now Professor Drew went to India and later went to Egypt too? Did he learn the powers from India or did he learn them from Egypt? When did he go to India and when did he go to Egypt? Let's continue. And was able to cure aches, pains, fevers, consumptions, dyspensia, convulsions, lumbargo, heart disease, indigestion, neuralgia, paralysis, rheumatism, nervousness, bronchitis, asthma, fits, deafness, and blindness. Professor Drew, the magician, nail eater, Egyptian adult, also could cure deafness and blindness and heart disease before he was noble. Let's continue on. After making it possible for the local health department to cease business, the professor had contemplated chasing over to London to open the eyes of the blinded soldiers. Oh yes, he could do that for he had some wonderful experience in India amongst the soldiers. When did he go to India? Let's continue. The most expensive miracle that the professor performed was the ejection of all evil spirits and influence. Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept magician who ate nails and cured heart disease, blindness, and deafness, also was an exorcist. <laughs> Not my words, his words to the detectives. I'll read it again. The most expensive, because you had to pay for this miracle that the professor performed was the ejection of all evil spirits and influences, thereby making it possible for one to enjoy a night of perfect sleep. New workers, oh, excuse me, nowhere appeal for such a, however, thank goodness. It says no new workers appear for, for such a, so nobody went to him for that. Maybe that's why he left Newark. Let's continue. Hundreds of persons have been advised by the professor, according to the police, and an investigation is still being conducted with a hope of obtaining some accurate information regarding the size of his clientele. We can pause right there for a second. That's the first. You ain't never seen that before. And there's more. Before he was noble. So in addition now to can you provide the list from the prison showing him ever me going to see Garvey at the Atlanta Federal P uh, uh, Penitentiary, Mr. Tahaga Bay? And in addition, providing any evidence of Garvey ever mentioning Noble Drew Ali, Mr. Tahaga Bay, can you now confirm that Noble Drew Ali was a nail eating magician? who could cure blindness, deafness, while being an exorcist and taking a trip to India, India as an Egyptian adept. You know you don't mess up now, right? Oh, and excuse me, could you don the cape, gown, and hood while you present this evidence to us? Oh, and can you explain the Virginia birth? Because I'm sure your partner, Laura Alba, has seen that in some of the writings. If you don't want it, I'll help you out. One of them's called Before the Feds. There's no secrets here. 
We've looked through all the material. People who are listening can probably Google before the feds and see some of this information. Shall we continue on? Let's go see. This is that same article that has just been blown up. Let's read the next one. Together, so you see, it's no sleight of hand. Let's find out more. Also, can we tell them that in that census, how many people was named Mr. Drew? Yeah, we got all that. That's why it's going to be provided so they can see, so they can go to see where the <laughs> Virginia birth comes from. There's no, we ain't hot nothing. <laughs> Everybody's going to come to their own conclusion. This ain't no gotcha moments. But now, what we're going to do, which you ain't never seen before, is continue to read when he was in Newark and before he was noble who he was. You heard about it, but you ain't seen it. So let's find out. So now we got him in jail. What happens? Did he get knocked? Did he get locked up? Let's see. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? We'll continue just as soon as I find it. Okay. I got to go back for a second. Voodoo. Wait a minute. Hold on. We're not going to. I know he ain't involved in voodoo and exorcism and curing deafness and blindness. Oh, yes, he is. That's the one. I know that ain't right. I know I ain't read that right. Voodoo. No, he not. Hold on. I'm just trying to find it on the page so I can blow it up so we can read it together once again. Because I have the bigger article, as you can see. I'm just trying to find where the heck is it on this page? Otherwise, we got, oh, there it is. I see Drew popped up right there. There it is, folks. Let's see if I, how big can I make that? Let me scroll it on over here. Let's scroll it on over here. Look at that. Let's read this together, folks. This is from, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is from the, for all those wanted, the, July, the Monday, July 17th, 1916 issue of the Newark Evening News. I repeat, for the Moors who want it, it is the Newark Evening News, Monday, July 17th, 1916, as people can see. So let's find out now what happened to this Professor Drew. Okay. Let's see. Charm of voodoo is Drew's hoodoo. Hmm. Cool. I need <laughs> everyone to pay full attention to what you're about to see. At full attention. Court gazing in crystal ball sees man guilty of practicing witchcraft could cure paralysis overnight. This ought to be good. Gazing into a crystal mounted on black velvet, Judge Osborne today in the Court of Special Sessions found that Thomas Drew, not Timothy, voodoo doctor, was guilty of practicing medicine without a license and with dealing in witch. Craft. I don't know. I don't, I don't see. I don't see nobody jumping off a roof yet. Let me repeat that. Maybe I ain't hear me. <clears throat> Clear my throat. Charm of voodoo is Drew's hoodoo. Court gazing in crystal ball sees man guilty of practicing witchcraft. Could cure paralysis. Overnight. Let me start again. Gazing into a crystal mounted on black velvet, Judge Osborne today in the Court of Special Sessions found that Thomas Drew, 
voodoo doctor was guilty of practicing medicine without a license and with dealing in witchcraft. The finding of the court proved the utter uselessness of magnetic influence and mesmeric science in the dignified atmosphere of a courtroom. Useless magnetic science? Mesmeric science, excuse me, magnetic influence? The charges against Drew were based on two visits made to him, which we saw in the other, to his occult offices. At 22 School Street, June 26, by detectives from Chief Log's office. But the real cause of his trouble was a brainstorm that attacked him several years ago in Basking Ridge, which is another part of New Jersey. Previous to that, Drew was an untamed spirit that jails, straitjackets, or handcuffs could not hold. Eating 10 penny nails. Okay, if it's old news to Harker Bay, I will, I will put the link in the chat, brother. I want you to explain the crystal ball. You ain't never seen this, bro. Eating 10 penny nails was chucked because we're going to get to where your nobleness got his source from, got his power from. I'm going to show y'all what you're following. Eating 10 penny nails was child's play. And even more remarkable feat were performed with ease. Drew admitted all this with becoming modesty. He explained that much of his ability had been zapped by the brainstorm when the court wondered how the county jail had held the man for 16 days. He told them his ability got zapped. <laughs> he told the police he couldn't get out of the jail because his ability got zapped from a brainstorm. Let me continue on. Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. I need everyone listening to hawk a bay, uh, bay, bay, uh, baby from uh, Cash Money, every bay, baby, and Ali you could find to hear this next paragraph. Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. So where did he get them from? He said he had been born with the power, fine, and has since developed it by correspondence courses. I'll read it again. Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. He said he had been born with the power and had since developed it by correspondence courses, which we'll examine. What could they have been? Brother Rob Warren, please don't let me forget to go to Virginia, where he was at. Remember, he's dealing with magnetism, clairvoyance people, and now he is admitting that he got this from correspondence courses and wrapped this all up in some Indian and Egyptian stuff. Let's continue further because we're going to finally get to who is your leader. He said he had been born with the power and had since developed it by correspondence courses. Want some more proof, y'all? He was also the possessor, which means he had, of a book which contained the wisdom of Indian yogis and men of magic. 18 missing years of Jesus to Christ. <coughs> He was also the possessor, which means he had in his possession a book which contained the wisdom of Indian yogis and men of magic. So he went to Egypt. So he was so divinely inspired. He sent the way for a correspondence course, bruh. Remember, we said magnetism, clairvoyance, and all this Indian, Egyptian, Bavatsky stuff mixed in. Does that now explain, which I haven't mentioned 
all of that unto the I grant and all that stuff that was supposedly he jacked for the circle seven. I'm not even getting into that one. Now the audience can figure out where it came from. Drew, I'm not gonna read it again. He was also the possessor of a book which contained the wisdom of Indian yogis and men of magic. Judge Osborne suggested that this volume would be a valuable addition to the records of the free public library. No disposition was made of the glass ball which Drew used to straighten his eyes since the brainstorm. That glass ball, fat folks, is the crystal ball that the judge was looking at on his desk. Why did Noble, excuse me, Timothy Drew, the Egyptian adept, nail eater who walked around bending bars with a gown and a hood on, also have a crystal ball? A crystal ball? Was it for the exorcisms? Was it to cure the deafness or the blindness? A crystal ball? Man, if you don't stop playing. Remember, this ain't none of my words, my brother's words, or anybody who has anything against the noble Drolly. This is his words, what he did while in court and the newspapers. A crystal ball? <sighs> All right. Drew had told them, oh, excuse me, detect, wait, hold on, let me back up. No disposition was made of the glass ball which Drew used to straighten his eyes since the brainstorm. So he used his crystal ball to get his, uh, ma this magical powers back after they had been taken from him while he was in jail due, due to this brainstorm. Do you understand what he's telling these people in the courtroom? Detectives Bauman and Schrader and police matron Mrs. Elizabeth Hughes said the crystal ball had been used to look into the future when they called at the doctor's office to obtain advice on a real estate deal. Did we just make up him using the crystal ball? Detectives Bauman and Schrader and police matron Mrs. Elizabeth Hughes said the crystal ball had been used to look into the future when they called at the quote unquote doctor's office to obtain advice on a real estate deal. Once again, not our words, their words. So you go to see him and he's looking his with the hood on, purple hood, and his crystal ball, and he, you pay a dollar, and he's predicting your future? You pay another dollar here, you get an exorcism? You pay another dollar, you get some medicine? If you pay another dollar, he'll eat some nails for you. How noble are these actions? How noble are these actions? Quite magical. This man could cure deafness and blindness, he said, along with heart disease. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Even, yo, that's perfect. Even Alexa says she's not sure about that. That is perfect. I did not even time that. <laughs> uh, yo! <laughs> Come on. Come on. Are you sitting up here worrying about Dr. Sabi? Uh, did he cure AIDS? Man, before you get to worry about Dr. Sabi cure AIDS, you need to go back uh, into 1916 and find out how did this guy cure heart disease, blindness, deafness, and perform exorcisms all while eating nails. All right, so let's finish this article. Drew had told them after consulting his glass ball, Drew had told them after consulting his glass ball, Drew had told them after consulting his glass ball that the investment was a good one, particularly if they used the other fellow's money. 
Other valuable items of information made known by Drew were that infantile paralysis took from two to three years to develop, and that wait, Alan, go on mute for a second because this needs to be heard. They need, they may need to halt, halt going at Doctor Sabi for a minute and find out how he, this guy, do all this. Other valuable items of information made known by Drew were that infantile paralysis took from two to three years to develop and that he could cure this. He can cure. He was going around Newark, the black folks telling him he could cure their baby's paralysis. Took from two to three years to develop and that he could cure this and other diseases overnight. Can you imagine some poor black woman taking a paralyzed baby, baby, to him? And he telling him, let him, or let me look at my crystal ball and, and sprinkle this over you and the baby be cured overnight. Not our words, his words. His method. He explained to the court, this is important to remember, was passing the magnetic, there's that word again, influences in his blood in the afflicted part, thereby killing the germs. He was going to transfer the magnetism in his blood to cure paralysis in babies. And this is what he told black families um, um, in Newark in 1916 and prior. Huh? Not our words. Not us making up something. That's your God. That's your prophet. How noble are these actions? <clears throat> Danny, let me know when you finish with that one. Well, you got another one? Just the last one? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Because we want to make it clear on and, and add the information to the other information. So go in the back chat and read that first paragraph with his picture on it. And then we'll understand. Okay, hold on. Evolves. You're right. Right. Okay. So now let me just finish this last of what you ain't never seen before. So y'all can stop pump faking because I asked the dude. The librarian, the only people they got it, and nobody ever requested it before. So stop it. There's only one other person requested it actually is referred to, and that's a reference to another reference that somebody had went to Newark Public Library. Yes, I give it out. So if those who want to go and find it more than otherwise can go and do it because it might be something that you want to have the actual primaries for your records. This ain't about just uh, hoarding no information for gotchas. This may help with your history, whether you like it or not. We just want the truth. So let me finish this last paragraph. Other valuable items of information made known by Drew were that infantile paralysis took from two to three years to develop and that he could cure this and other diseases overnight. His method, he explained to the court, was passing the magnetic influences in his blood to the afflicted part, thereby killing the germs. It had always been easy for him to do, he said, until recently when the attempt to, to cure an inmate at the jail of a chronic headache to prove his power in jail, physician Edward W. Marking it. You need to get a knowledge chamber asking the knowledge is your okay. There you go. So here we go. There goes the article. So we have now things on the table. So Brother Allen wanted me to go and to pull over. I don't see it in the back chat. What you talking about? I put it in the um the chat we on now. Oh, 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 okay. Let me go back. Let me go back. Want to start a business? I can show you how easy it is to form one in just a few steps. First stop, starting your LLC. In so let me, uh, let me stop sharing for one second, folks. And then when we continue. So we can see the evolution to show and prove the stuff that you already knew. We now added a foundation to it. How are you putting it right here? Where? How can I All see right, it? All right, so I'm going to put it in our chat. Then. Yeah, put it in our chat. Yeah. I'm going to put it right here. And then after you read that one, 
I'm going to no, no, no. Don't let me forget where he got his information Virginia. from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The correspondence course. I, I told, you, that. I told people one. to remember clairvoyance and magnetism. He said he got it from a correspondence course. We're going to see who is the originator. Okay, so yeah. what the show is this. We're going to show you now this should make more sense to the people who have seen it before. And that is this right here. So now, people who have seen this before, does this not make more sense to you? Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept student, office hours 10 to 12 a.m. Remember we said two hours each, six to eight a.m. I am a Muslim. Professor Drew is a man who was born with divine power, crystal balls, a cure deafness, eat nails. He was taught the taught the adepts by the adepts of Egypt. I have the secret of destroying the germs of tuberculosis and cancer of the lungs. Noble Drali could cure cancer in 10, 30 days. Back in 1916, 15. Your lungs can whatever can something and a very strict examination of the germs are entirely destroyed also destroy the germs of eating cancer gout rheumatism lumbago all the stuff that he went to court for heart so don't tell me this ain't him that's him heart trouble female diseases and serious infections of the body call at once adults and children and be relieved of your suffering if you have any doubt about my treatments, you can be healed before a dollar is paid. But he was charging the people a dollar. False advertising, lying as well. Did that was happening? And here it says you can be healed before a dollar is paid. We just read in the court he was charging people a dollar. Which one is it? Somebody pulled a flim flam. Says also these divine treatments. Ha, there has been gr great success of, I'm sorry, I can't make it out, this is a bad copy, something and long-standing disease, which have been around two or three days, also give divine instructions and interpret the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, also have 18 years of Christ's life. Hmm. Who has the, the 18 years of Christ's life? Was the Amadea sector around? Yep, the Indians. Does the, Indian, <laughs> the, the Indian Ahmadiyya sect talk about these missing years of Jesus' life? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That's one place. So, holy something, 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 know more about the power of Jesus Christ. So that's him. All right, and we got we to gotta put the last one in there. And, and then we'll put the, the bold, last the one. Letters. And then we go back to Virginia and the correspondent course. This is the last one. Now, mm. does this make more sense when later this this guy does this medicine show this what you're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, with all this? Do you get it now? This was a medicine show that he was performing. Don't miss the great Morris drama. Come ye everyone and see the seventh wonder of the world. It's like Houdini advertisement. The great Morris drama with constituents. Events in the in the last days amongst the inhabitants of North America. In this Morris drama, the need of a nationality will be made known to you through the acts of men, women, and children. There will be great lectures and this nationalistic topic by the Prophet Noble Juali and many of the sheiks of the grand body of the Morris Holy Temple of Science. You will also bear here, one of the greatest Moorish female sausages of the day, Madam Lomax Bay. The Prophet Noble Drali will be bound with several yards of rope. Remember, Thomas Drew was being bound with cuffs and escaping him and all that magic tricks. So now the <laughs> Prophet Noble Drali will be bound with several yards of rope as Jesus was bound in the temple at Jerusalem and escaped before the authorities could take charge of him. So will the prophet Drew Ali perform the same act 
being bound by anyone in the audience and will escape in a few seconds. Magic show, medicine show, wrapped in Indian Egyptian Blavatskyism and the Lawrenceism. He also will heal many in the audience. Here goes that healing again. He also will heal many in the audience without touching them. He got to throw this again, free of charge. Remember, that was the setup 15 years prior in Newark, New Jersey, free of charge. Then you find out you got to pay a dollar. Stand in front of their seats, manifesting his divine power. Does this document make sense now? Does this document make sense now? Now that you know who Thomas Drew is, and now that you know that Thomas Drew is really later becomes Noble Drew Ali. So there was a question. Virginia, of, don't forget. Where, that's where I'm going right now, of where he could have gotten his information that he admitted to himself from. Let's type correspondence in my clippings and see what we come up with. <gasps> Look what we have here. Huh. A correspondence college. Did Noble Draw, did they say that his paperwork said he was from Virginia? Yes, it did. Let's read what was in the, the black newspaper, the Richmond Planet, in Virginia around the same time. Hmm. Let's see what we have here, folks. Since he, oh, he of correspondence magic. Let's read together. I told people to remember magnetism and clairvoyance and all the stuff that he was doing. And he got it from a correspondence course. Let's take a look, y'all. This is really, really it. Game over. This is who your teacher is. Evil influences removed. Did Thomas Drew not say he could do exorcisms? This is 1904. Pay attention, folks. The greatest workers and mediums in the world, doctors T.H. and Cornelia White, will lift all troubles and worry from you. Sound familiar? These two powerful mediums had 20 years of practical experience in white and black art, spiritualism, hypnotism, mental, and, God darn it, we need to get this big. What they have? Magnetic healing. and personal magnetism. They have traveled all over the world gathering knowledge. Sound familiar? Magnetic healing, hypnotism, spiritualism. This is way before, this is 1904. This is a Richmond planet, a black newspaper. And it said the boy was from Virginia, not from no North Carolina or may have spent time in both means he has access to the black newspapers because it's probably in the black section of town where he was at. And in that, he admitted correspondence courses and his correspondence courses match up exactly with the ads that was in the black newspapers. This is who your teacher is. Your teacher is Drs. T. H. and Cornelia White, because this is where your master teacher sent the way to get his correspondence course from that he admitted to that we just read. Let's keep going. Personal, they have traveled all over the world, sound familiar, gathering knowledge, and have worked for and read the lives of all the greatest men and women in the world. They have helped thousands to fame and fortune, and now they want to help you. They possess the only known secret of the great charm of mysteries. And in order to introduce the wonderful work of their correspondence college of science, correspondence college of science, correspondence. He said he took a correspondence course. Science is the name he threw all in it. Is it not? Game over. 
they will give everyone who becomes a student of their college one of these powerful secret charms of mysteries absolutely free. This is worth thousands of dollars to you as it will bring you health, wealth, happiness, and power. Their college of science, he ain't go no damn Egypt and India. He all the way and went to college online. It's the first version of online. Not only is he the first clout chaser, he's the first uh, getting his online degree. And spooky. Their college of science teaches you in a simple manner how to remove all evil from yourself. Was he not an exorcist or others? How to cure all natural or unnatural diseases? Couldn't he do that? He teaches you how to hypnotize. Wasn't he hypnotizing anyone? Make them do as you say. Was he not hypnotizing Negroes and to believe in your hokey pokey stuff he was pulling on you? It teaches you how to read anyone's life accurately from the cradle to the grave. It teaches, once again, personal magnetism. It teaches you how to unite the separated. It teaches you how to locate buried treasures. Write to us at once for full participation of our College of Science correspondence course and then become a student so that you can receive one of these great charms of mysteries. As the other people say, dagger. Done. Done. You want to be noble, Drew Ali? You should write a write to Doctors T. H. and Cornelia White. Where is K. Shine when you need him? This is the college that your God graduated from, a correspondence college. Did I make it up? Once again, no. He said. He got his information. Once again, let's go to the article. Where did he get his information from? Don't ever put NBK name and stuff again, buddy. Ever. Told you that from the jump, man. We try ever. to be nice to you, man. We try to build and be like, we, we, we don't do this type of stuff. Now, you didn't open a floodgate. Oh, Danny, don't forget, we got to talk about Ethiopia. No, we get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, I want yeah, this finish. to sink in. Yeah. I want this to sink in. Don't ever, ever do that. Our job is not to be here attacking all of these organizations. That's not what we do. Look through our channel. We have discussions about stuff. We ain't the banging channel. We ain't the, the, the debating you and tearing down your beliefs. We understand where it comes from. We get it. You were trying to do what you could for your people. But don't you ever try to come over here. Like, we're not thorough with this. Or we don't know what's really going on. Stay in your religious lane playing them religious games. Your mystical origins and your all that stuff. You don't really want it. It could get a lot worse. If you think this is it, you are sadly mistaken. Try to give you one chance. Try to give you one chance. So, like I said, Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. He said, he had been born with the power and had since developed it by correspondence courses. He was also the possessor of a book which contained the wisdom of Indian yogis and men of magic. So we did our homework further and put the Virginia piece in and saw that, wait a minute, this is going on. And there's only two places, really, where he could have corresponded to. This is just one. Do you want the other one? <laughs> uh, you don't really want the other one, do you? <laughs> you don't really want the other one, do you? Let me stop sharing for a second. And maybe I can pull that up. You don't really want the other one, do you?
You don't want the other one. This is brought to you by Sahaka Bay and uh, Lord Mr. Abel. This is brought to you by the people who just want to jump out there and couldn't leave it alone. We had this information, and I didn't want to do it. But since you want to go live and go back and forth, because also, and I let Rob Bourne address this, but you try to check the brother's character, and you know that's not called for. I know for a fact what he is trying to do, and whether you want to label it black nationalism or not, it's something that you don't do. Because we, in fact, and I, and I gave the opportunity, I said, if Tahaka Bay wants to come on and talk about the great stuff he's doing in Baltimore, then, then, then that's what it should be. That's what it's about. But now you decide to take an issue dealing with more science to attack his character and his love for his people. Where they do that at? This is the problem with putting your doctrine before your people. And that's terrible. But that's what you chose to do. So now you got to explain the nail eating, crystal ball having, purple hood wearing, purple hood wearing, clout chasing, cura <laughs> of cura of deafness, baby paralysis, and magic shows, blindness, rope trick bonding to escape artists, exorcism. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Don't forget exorcists. Huh? Because what I want to do, I want to get the right picture. You know that's what I'm looking for, right? <laughs> All right, fine. We're gonna play this game. Let me just show my screen, then I'll pull it up live so people see it ain't no, it ain't no uh tricks. Here's the other person that was doing correspondence courses. Choose your weapon. It is an institute that was in Chicago. It is named the DeLawrence Institute. Did you say DeLawrence? Oh, man. I'll get to that. We're going to read in 1902 what you could get via correspondence from the DeLawrence Institute. Hypnotism, the wonders and possibilities of applied hypnotism personal magnetism, occult and psychic influence, also the famous silent Hindu concentration for the induction of hypnotic sleep and the curing of diseases taught at the DeLawrence Institute of Hypnotism and Occult Philosophy by L.W. DeLawrence, the well-known author, lecturer, demonstrator and practitioner of medical psychology and suggestive therapeutics. Listen closely. Professor DeLawrence, who is an adept, this is 1902. Now y'all think I must be making stuff up. How big can I get this? That's as big as it go. Right here. See where the mouse is going? Look at the words. This is 1902. Professor DeLawrence, who is an adept, has spent years where in India with the Eastern adepts and yogis. Before I go any further, what did that man say? That man said, Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. He said he had been born with the power and had since developed it by correspondence courses. He was also the possessor of a book which contained the wisdom of Indian yogis, of men of magic. Let us go back to what was going on in 1902. Professor DeLawrence, who was an adept, has spent years where? In India with the Eastern adepts and yogis. Hmm. Hmm. And is not to be confounded with those who are attempting to teach hypnotism and who have only a superficial knowledge of the science or those who take your money for a mail order correspondence course, neither of whom can teach you. The Dolores Institute is the oldest and only institution of its kind in the country where the student obtains a knowledge of hypnotism and occultism as it is taught and practiced in the Orient by the Hindu adepts who are the greatest hypnotists in the world and was opened in Chicago 
by request from the many readers of Professor DeLawrence's famous work on hypnosis, hypnotism, Hindu magic, and occultism entitled Hypnotism and Suggestion, Medical Hypnosis, Practical Lessons in Hypnotism, and of course, Vital Magnetism. The book of magical art, Hindu magic and occultism, the Bible defended and occult interpretations of the books of the Holy Scripture. Don't make me pull up this again to show you this again, to show you that one of the things he was doing was interpreting the Bible. And I'll show you that this is 1902, and that's 10 years after. Those who are interested in these sciences are most emphatically informed and warned that in these times of humbugs, imitators, and imposters, blah, 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 blah. Right? So you can read this, and I'll read the whole thing. I don't think you want me to. Mediums, uh, hypnosis, uh, all bad habits cure the same thing. This is in Chicago, and the Lawrence is huge, and this was the Institute, the Lawrence Institute. Now, why? Why? Is the Lawrence important? Why? Why? Let's see. Let's do this together. What we're going to do is go to actually L. W. De Lawrence. Watch this, folks. Let's see why this is important. Let's see what L. W. De Lawrence wrote, y'all. Let's see who offered this correspondence course that we speak of. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Was an American author and publisher on occult and spiritual topics. The Lawrence was born in Cleveland. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, let me get this. Let me get this. His publishing company, the Lawrence and Scott and Spiritual Supply Mail Order Company House, was located in Chicago, Illinois. The Lawrence was a pioneer in the business of supplying magical and occult goods by mail order. And his distribution of public domain books is, hold on, hold on, Secrets of the Psalms, Powwows of the Long Lost Friend, had a great and lasting effect on the African American hoodoo, urban hoodoo. Let's go further. What else did he have his hand in? He is mocked and reviled among modern occultists for his plagiarism of the pic pictorial key to the tarot and S.L. McGregor Mathers, the key of Solomon. He also wrote his own works, including the Master Key, a personal development book, and he got involved in New Thought and the Spiritualist Movement and what have you. Now, Alan, can you speak to the Doctrine a little bit and what they always claim that it is is stolen from. It's stolen from India. The secrets are held in India and Egypt. Where was where did they say that portions of the Quran that Quran was taken from? Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ on the book until the I grant. Until the I I grant thee or something. I grant. Until D.I. Grant, something like that. Uh -huh. Probably got it. Was yeah, this it not right distributed by DeLawrence? <laughs> Was this not distributed by DeLawrence? Huh? Oh, let's go here to find out. Huh. Here's that name again. DeLawrence, Chicago. Let's type. The, oh, the occult gospel is what the Lawrence did. Oh, during his correspondence courses. Uh oh, let's see his symbolism. Can we get that bigger? Let's see if we can. Oh, let's scroll over a bit. Hmm. Let's see what else this guy was doing here. Hmm. Can't seem to scroll, maybe. Yoga Publishing Society. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Hmm. Looks like uh, the little Egyptian symbol up there to me, buddy. Hmm. 
But we were looking for something in particular. We're not on a search. We you said it was taken from unto the I grant. Let's see if that's in here. Unto. Uh oh. Wait, wait. Excuse me. Please go on mute. Let's see what this says. Since there's no magic tricks, guys. How about this guy with this correspondence course in 1910. Reverend Drew Ali would form the Morris Science Temple around the publication of the Circle 7 Quran, which encapsulated teachings from Levi H. Dowling's 1908 publication, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, the anonymous Rose Christian book unto the I grant. And he was traveling between New York and Chicago at the time. We can only imagine what other occult influencers may have crept in. Huh. You know who published this book? It was the Lawrence's company. So now when you go back and you see in 1916 in Newark, where this man out of his own mouth says what? Drew didn't take all the credit for his wonderful gifts. He said he had been born with the power and had since developed it by correspondent courses. I just gave you the two biggest correspondence courses and it matches up both of them exactly what they did. Those are your teachers. Your teachers are a husband and wife named White, and your other teacher is the Lawrence, this guy. And now, the icing on the cake. Let's see what the Lawrence looks like, all dressed up in his hokey gear. Let's see. <laughs> Wham, wham, wham. Game over. Let me see if I can get a bigger picture. <laughs> you got the okey dote by a correspondence call sticking. You got some holier than thou walking around here screaming about this. You don't know, sit your boy. Let's see. Search Google for this image so we can get a nice big to show the people. Let's go to all sizes. Oh, that's the only one online. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Look at your man with the uh oh, crescent and moon, turban, writing books. Let's go to his website, as a matter of fact. You can do this at home. Can somebody put this in the chat for me? TheLawrenceCompany.com. Since 1892, the correspondence courses that he was offering and the magical rings and all this that Thomas Drew said he was getting his information from correspondence. Oh! Yo, I know they ain't got a crystal ball up here. What is that? Oh, no. Y'all saw that. It's going to come back around because I can't click on it. I know good and goddamn well they ain't got a crystal ball in here. I know they don't. We're going to sit here and wait for it, folks. I'm going to make this look in this window right here. And a crystal ball is going to come up. I, I didn't plan this one. Is this where this nigga will order his crystal ball from, too? Come on. I'm not moving until this comes up. Can't be that many pictures. The Lawrence's Oriental Incense. Oh, you ain't gonna come back up now because I wanted to? Anyway, folks, trust me, there's a crystal ball that's in this first one. I wonder, is that where it was ordered from? Can't click on none of this. Now, <laughs> they should have a, yeah, give me the catalog products. Oh, that's good. I can't spell. 
Don't make me search for Delores Crystal Ball. I know y'all saw it. Maybe if I go back and be the pop first on that pop up. Horace Rings. But, Alan, you got anything? No, nah, man. I mean, Delores, he does have an effect on multiple of these organizations at that time. I don't want to, you know, we can throw the Hebrews in there a little bit. I'm not talking I'm about, no, 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 no. I'm no, not talking leave it alone. about the Hebrews. Leave it alone. I'm leave not talking alone. about nobody else. I mean, I mean, I mean, we will keep it on over Joely, but he has an influence on Robert Matthews with his magical diagrams. He did this my, already. My brother. But we stay you on. No Hebrews done nothing to me. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Ain't no Hebrews done nothing to me. So. Yeah. Until that, is, until that happens, is, I don't know what you're um, talking about. Bro. I mean, we can leave it alone. You leave it alone. So I'll take care of that. You go out there and start all of them. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm dealing specifically with a person who seems to have a problem and mentioning NDK out their mouth. I just want to let it be known. All right, so I guess it, I guess it's link drop the time, Mr. Tabak, to talk a base at you in there. See, we put the link in the chat. And Stop we don't cut you, we don't cut you off. We don't block you. We don't act like the phone don't work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you remember last night. But well, here we go. Here go the link coming in a chat for you, boy. This is what we do over here. We don't talk garbage about you. We give you the link. Speak your speech. Explain the nail eating. Exorcism. Her, exorcism. Ball bending. Rope trick having. Correspondent course yogi. Divine person. You asked for this. You did this. Here go the link right here. Here go the link right here. You did this. Don't ever forget that. Clout chasing, magic man, hoodoo, voodoo, and all that other mystical stuff. Come on here and explain and show us and prove that everything that we said is not right and exact. Here go the link talker. Don't act like you ain't in the chat no more. You popping it in there again. That's two times. That's three times. That's four times. If you busy, I can understand that, but you ain't too busy to be typing. Link is in the chat. Link is in the chat. Oh, let me, am I sharing my screen so they don't think there's no hokey dope going on here? Share screen. Oh, God, please. All right. Let's type bay in here. My screen is sharing. Oh, around the same time, you have an Egyptian fakir, there's that word again, doing buried alive tricks, huh? And going at Houdini, huh? Right around the same time. This is 1927. This is the biggest show in the country. This was David Blaine doing that, um, doing that uh buried alive thing, and also Black Herman stick. As you can see, this is in Atlanta. 100 C Egyptian Miracle Man. And he buried alive. The Bay Bay Circus was the biggest thing. And Houdini was even getting mad because the president and everybody was going to see the Bay Bay Circus. Not my words. Look what it says. Let me scroll on up. 100 C Egyptian Miracle Man. A lot of miracles from the Egyptians. Hamid Bay thrills big crowd. People know Piedmont Park in Atlanta. That's the biggest daggone park there. And he did. There he is, buried alive. Is in he a park. bay? He's a bay? He's a bay. <laughs> and they had a whole Bay Bay circus going around at the same time. Hmm? Hey, Danny, we forgot. Um, you forgot the Ethiopia. We got to talk about. Well, I ain't forget nothing. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want it all. I need. I need these things to be addressed. Here we go. Here's his ad right here, y'all. We are gonna look at it together. I didn't make this up. Let's see what. See how they do. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hamid Bay. Look at him. Look at him. What is he? Look, young, is and daring, <laughs> young and daring Egyptian miracle man. He baffles scientists, scores at score, scoffs at torture, sneers at pain, controls his post, dies at will. See Hamid Bey defy death and win. Doesn't this sound like somebody else? Come see somebody else, Ali. 
Miracles of the Far East. See Hamid Bey buried alive on a vacant lot next to Maine Motorco. Hmm? Hmm? At the same time. There you go. There you go. Mm hmm. Want some more? There's a whole lot more to the story. What I'm asking is please deal with the questions that we ask. And yo, leave us out your mouth, kid. It's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. We don't like, let us go back to just doing us. That was a good conversation. Let it go. Let it go. Take this as a little smack on the hand. Secrets of the Magicians. There's your man. Wasn't your man eating nails and doing that? There's Hamid. There's the bay. Right there. Same time. Same time. Garfield, you think that was hurtful? <laughs> Dude, it's a lot more, bro. I told you. You ain't never seen it before. Never. Drew out, excuse me, Thomas Drew's words. Lesson number one, keep MBK name out your mouth, keep it respectful, and we can build in dialogue. It don't got to be a, a jihad. But you want jihad. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Somebody else doing a rope trick? Uh-oh. Who's this? <laughs> trick? Huh? Somebody looking like that picture that you all know of them people standing in front of the thing. And what was he doing? Rope trick. Rope trick. <sighs> Let me just stop sharing before it could get, it could get real, like, man. Stop playing. Stop. Since in the past two weeks, you know, I had Indians jump out the 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 the, 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 the foxhole and moors they're like wait 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 we not involved in y'all little fights and things why why try to pull us in but if you want it then <laughs> you got it you got it and i mainly did this and listen man y'all could take it for his word but don't ever disrespect my brother and what he's trying to do for his people in his capacity because you wouldn't like nobody disrespect yours. Even if it was so much as you being a good father and raising your children and providing for your household, that's what you do for your people because your family is, 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 is the cornerstone of your people. But for you to go on there and try to insult that man's character for some nail eating dude from a while ago who tried to do his best for our people you don't lost your ever loving mind let's let, let's get a recap the magician rope trick exorcist ball bending exorcist crystal ball fortune teller cure of deafness blindness paralysis crystal ball crystal ball using <laughs> It's the ball that purple hood wearing murder correspondence course taken yogi instructing. I went to India, or oh, it was Egypt, or oh, I'm from Virginia, maybe North Carolina. <laughs> Alias changing Timothy the magician drew. There was nothing spectacular, divine about this person. He's a regular black man, like all of the other ones who came before who was adding on to the culture that was going on, and they all put some mysterious stuff around them, and they was doing what they was doing. So now, now, for the record, for the record, I will give, because this is what we do, we give credit where credit is due. Like, I didn't see the uh, SETI uh, debate, but Rob Warren and gave me the link, and I saw um, Ali Muhammad's the other day. This was after uh, we did ours. I had no idea about it, and I, I'm telling you, in that particular thing, he did a great job in that. But I noticed, I said, hey, he didn't mention this. And so what you witness is something that you ain't never seen in the conscious community. You ain't never seen before he was noble 
firsthand, other than an Egyptian adept called, you ain't never read his words or saw what he was doing so you could put the pieces, pieces together. Never. That jewel was brought to you by new black knowledge. To the smoke you want, you have been smoked. You are ether, you are dust. And we don't destroy, we also build. So if you'd like to build from here forward, we are 100% in. If you wanna build to talk about the stuff that you're doing in your community, and the organizations that you have set up for your community and you'd like some help or some resources or just to make it more aware to the greater community, our platform is accessible for that. We don't just destroy, we build. Yeah, it's a hard guy. I see you still commenting in there. Maybe you can't get on. At least say that you can't get on in the chat because I don't want you to say that, oh, you talked about me and you ain't giving. I didn't do what you did. The link is in the chat for you to come on. If you're at work and you can't come on, please say so. You said you got some police records or something. By all means, bring it up. Let's go. Let's get this thing to talking. Let's get to talking. So, again, the link is in the chat again. Everybody see y'all keep posting in there. And, um, yeah. Jump on, brother, and teach. Teach. Brother, you, teach, brother, teach. Tarver, if you're listening, you are more than welcome. This ain't no adversary reform. This ain't nothing like, you know, channel you've been on before we don't get down like that over here you have a you have a police report about what why don't you come on if you have the time to type why don't you come on and explain what the police report had to do with all of the information we showed you noble Drew ali before he was noble Drew ali we now made made the people understand how he became to do his morris drama show we show you him, which you already saw, the Egyptian adept, the cure of diseases. Now it all makes sense. So are you going to come on here and prove that he is not Thomas Drew, that that's not him? Are you going to show us the censors that we looked at, but there's only a couple of people with his name and we narrowed it down? Are you going to show that? Because we have the correspondence. We showed it in the beginning. The library, that, yeah, that guy, yeah, that's Thomas. That, that's Noble Drew Ali. That's the guy. You guys, have, um, give us this money. We're sending it to you right now. We give you all the articles you want. I give you anything we got. If you think that this is all we got, son, I'm sorry, son. It could get real bad, but we ain't gonna do that. We just got these questions to answer. Come on here and show and prove about the nail eating, exorcism, crystal ball fortune teller, prophet. Come on, you ask for this. Well, he said give him a sec, so to be fair, we give him a sec, sure. This is not a, first of all, is there any questions in the chat? Yeah, any questions about the information? If there's any questions or anything that I, that we should, should reshow, or if there's no clarity, I want to separate our words from the, from the, from the, sources words i don't want anything to get misconstrued or, or minced up like we are saying something about noble juali this is what i don't want to do with anything we want to try to find the sources and let the sources speak and not sources to take one position or another do we know that there's some bias in news <laughs> yeah do we know that there's some bias toward black folks back then sure sure that doesn't negate what he's saying in his activities, though. He said he had a brainstorm and something happened. He lost his magical powers until he got his crystal ball back. Not us. He said he took correspondence courses. Not us. Who's that? Peace. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's the brother right there. Peace. Who's that? I can't. Islam. It's locked out. What the hell? Peace, brother. Peace. You turn, I think you got to turn something down in the back. You hear music. Hold up. That's my wife. I just coming home for lunch, bro. So hold on. A oh, second. peace. Okay. Yeah, take your time, man. This ain't no. This ain't that serious, man. At the end of the day, you no, got to. No, hold up. Let me get my wife. Cut that down for a second, real quick. Hold on. So all things pertaining to motion, the uplifting of our people. 
by whomever that uh that makes a contribution. So, brother, what you what you're pulling up is history, and we embrace history. True scholars and true seekers of truth embrace history. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so, I have a lecture that I have already uh, uh, demonstrated in Atlanta. And this lecture, a few people have seen it. This lecture is called The Hijacking of the Morris Science Temple of America. Uh, what happened? No, The Hijacking of the Nation. What happened to the Morris Science Temple of America? And that history that you're uh, uh, displaying here, I display there. But I even go a step further. And so I don't embrace the concept of Prophet Noble Drew Ali name being Timothy Drew. I have uh, corroborating evidence, just as you just shown, that that's not the case. But I go a step further and show why that was put in place, why that name or a, 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 a switch of a switcheroo happened. And so I'm not going to give a whole bunch up on this, but I wait, can wait, tell wait, you. I know you have it for your for your own work and your own presentations. But That's I can cool. tell you, we don't run from this. What I no, can say this. Wait, wait, let's get past it. It's not the point of running at this point. Like, if you have it and you're presenting it, that's cool. I'm just trying to get some understanding so you have something to to to, to counter that this Thomas Drew is not Noble Drew Ali? No, no. I'm telling you that Thomas Drew and Noble Drew Ali is one and the same. Right. But I don't run from that. But that, I can, I'll see you. Like, listen, I don't know if you got it. Put it this way. I know... I've never seen the newspaper clippers. I will send them to you so you can have them. This ain't no, you know. You can send it to me to Harker Bay. I'm going to tell you this. Uh -huh. me, I don't think you're hearing me because I want you, uh, Yahoo. I'm going to email, I'm giving you my email right now. All right, yeah, I'll send them to you. Now, listen. Uh -huh. I don't, listen, I'm a different type of Moorish American, and this is what people don't understand. I embrace history. Okay. But I have this history. I have no problem with this history. I have no problem with the reports. I got. I have tons of reports, you know. And like I said, matter of fact, I'm, I'll give you a screenshot. Let me see if I can pull something up real quick. I now, have a file on Thomas. Drew. I, get, I get that, bro. But I'm just trying to understand. Like, could you, if, unless it's something you want to keep private, which which I get. No. Like, I, wait, hold on. Let's hear me out. How did you come to that conclusion that that Thomas Drew that's mentioned there is not? You saying it is Noble Drawley? Yes. See, that's why I don't think you're hearing me. Okay, so if it is Nubu Juali, right? Then, and this is not to start getting down the road. No, come on, brother, come clean. Come All right. Clean, so, 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 can you can you explain the curing of deafness and blindness and the crystal ball and that stuff? I will say this: I I was not there, uh -huh. but I do have I do have a report, a recorded report from those that was from two people that was with the prophet at that time that said they actually witnessed this. You know, so, I mean, I'm not okay. going to, I'm not going to. You know what? I, I like that. Finish. That's fine. No, let I, me take it. I take I'm it. Not, listen, listen, I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump out the window and say, oh yeah, the prophet healed this. I have confidence that the prophet is and was a healer. There's no problem with me with that. That's somebody else's problem not to accept that. That's that's, I have that's no fair. problem with that. That's fair. So what uh, what about the correspondence courses? Did you have any research into that? I've read all of that, brother. The thing is this. This mm -hmm. is the thing. I've mm -hmm. read all of that. I do know that if that is the if that's the fact of the matter, mm -hmm. I, I'm willing to accept that. Because we in the Morris Science Temple of America, look, look, this is brother, I talked to you for about five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think that you heard me when I was saying that I accept. No, no, the I, heard, I heard that. I'm not, I'm not but, fighting that, bro. I'm not, but but yeah, even yeah. even I'm looking at the chat right now, and they say no, that. No, listen, one thing we don't worry about the listen, chat. This is this listen to this. But I want our people to pay attention to what I'm saying, as opposed okay. to being goofy. You know what I'm okay. saying? Now, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, right? Um, I I accept that the prophet was a healer. That doesn't mean that you have to accept that. That's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I also accept uh, um, if the correspondence course, if that was the case, whether it's it's true or fabricated by the writers of the paper, it really doesn't have no bearing on me. Because one of the one of the things that I teach in the Morris Science Temple of America that are consistent with old 
olden times as it relates to the story of Jesus, the story of Muhammad, uh, the story of Abraham, and so forth and so on, that there's a period of divine uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. And the period of divine ministry is the part where everything unfolds and comes to fruition. And that period in Prophet Noble Drew Ali's mission was 1925 through 1929. Everything before that, you know, could be or would be a process of development into 1925 to 1929. Yeah, I can that. And this is known throughout history. So I don't run from that. You understand? No, I'm not the point of running, but, but 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 in this case, we're just trying to understand. Okay, influence. I can't, but I can't explain. Listen, I can't explain mm -hmm. the uh every part of the preparation leading up into mm -hmm. 1925 to 20, 20 uh 29. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, he's involving in the story. I get that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So 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 what I can say though, I know that in order for me to evolve into this. I could tell you some things that you'd be like, nah, for real, talk. For yeah, real. Talk, talk, come on, come on now. Listen, I agree with you 100%, but come on, son. The crystal no, ball, no, no, listen to what I'm saying. Ball, listen what I'm saying. I, no, I agree with you. That Father is Christ not debatable to me. The developmental process is not debatable to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, this, this is what happened, brother. Let me tell you mm -hmm. what happened. The elders hid this information from the generations. And so now, if you put it out or I put it out, it seemed like a shock. The elders hid it because they could not explain it and they tried to run from it. This is why I use the term I don't run from it. But right, when I'm right. telling you, know, right. but, but you know, in reality, in reality, the elders should have put it out there. But what happened in the takeover of the Morris Side Ship of America, they covered it up with the name Timothy Drew. They covered it up All with right. With, with with not making a historical account before 1925. They covered it up and only saying that he started in 1913 and then we jumped to 1925, like the right. Jesus story. Right, that's yeah, that's right. So, so they covered it up. That was their problem. That's but, not but, my problem, that's the eldest problem. My so, job is to clean it up. So, so could you help clarify one point? And I, I'm I honestly, I'm 100%, this is an honest question, I don't understand. So with that, with, with the elders, it seemed like there was a battle for power at some point. Right, absolutely. Where does the, is reincarnation a part of it? Or is no, that just somebody no, saying I don't support, that? I don't, I don't support, I don't okay. support okay. that, that, that far-fetched concept of Prophet Nova Drew Ali reincarnated. That's okay. not me. I don't okay. support that. So so how can, as as laymen or on the outside, how do we, how do we understand the various, um, different types of morals to try to understand because it gets confusing. Well, well, brother, you're going to have to follow to Harker Bay as I move forward. As I move forward, the brother said, I'm trying to hypnotize you. <laughs> <laughs> brother, as I move forward, as I move forward into public and, and into the, uh, 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 the more forefront of teaching <coughs> common sense moral science, then you'll be able to see right now it's so discombobulated, bro. It is what it is. It's so, discombobulated. So, so, but Reverend so, Targum Bay is going to do something. Mm -hmm. This year, in the coming few years, be it the will of Allah, I am going to clear all of this mess up where the next generation won't have to uh, be surprised. Because I'm not surprised with this. I'm telling you, I got the typed up letter from the precinct. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got the typed up letter. So I'm not surprised. But when you have the younger generation, they will become surprised. Like, But this is nothing to worry about. This is history. This is history. So what, what as far as I'm just trying to understand as far as lineage. So so by him passing and not naming a successor, like we He named the successor, brother. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So yeah. so, so would that be and educate me if I'm wrong, would that be the C Kirkman Bay would be the successor? No, nah, no. Nah, I uh, unfortunately uh I don't really want to get into that conversation at this time. Okay, but okay. I, will, That's fair. I will say, I will say uh um C. Kirkman Bay was not the one that was appointed successor by the prophet, although he was the prophet interpreter. So on the outside, and this is why you need to get on your job. Do you see how this can be confusing if we just absolutely, bro? Absolutely, Abs bro. Absolutely, I see how it's confusing. I see how it can be taken taken as pseudo. And so this is why when somebody like me will come in and to make it to explain, we got millions of moors. Nobody else going to take this thing. 
Nobody else gonna gonna grab this mic. Mm -hmm. I don't have a no problem with it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But nobody else is gonna grab this mic because they probably don't even know this history. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they grand sheiks didn't tell them this history. Mm. And they and they oh I got to explain this I got to explain this I don't have to explain anything in reality I just go and produce what the prophet produced but for the sake of understanding in the next generation it's my pleasure to explain but it's going to take time for it to get out into the mass public you know people in my circle know people in my circle know I got the advertising. Uh, um, so, um, so, um, so, um, so, 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 what is the name of your organization? The Morris Science Temple of America. We are taking it back. What okay, you mean, so, taking it back? This, 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 is in that other words, I'll say this. I'll uh -huh. say this. When the Prophet Noble Drew Ali passed on, there was a riffraff in the leadership. There was five different people or groups, if you will, trying to take over the movement due to the fact of the monetary value of the movement. It was a million dollar uh, religious corporation. You know, mm -hmm. it had power uh, uh, that as a group, it had power with the, uh, po the local politicians. It had power with the local bankers. It had power to control the whole community wherever there was a temple. And so people wanted that power. And so there was five different factions of groups trying to take that power. So after Prophet Nobu Ali passed form, uh, he left his 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 uh, uh, the leadership to Brother Edward Meliel. Okay. But but through Edward Meliel, from 1929 to 1934, Edward Meliel was the head of the Morris Science Temple of America, known. As, had the title of the Grand Sheik and Chairman, as well as the Supreme Grand Sheik of the Morris Science Temple of America. And what happened was Emil Eel passed form in 1934 under suspicious circumstances. And that's when Kirkman Bay, you know what I mean? Kirkman Bay jumped okay. into position. Okay. You see? And so I'm not a, I'm not scared to talk about these things. You ain't gonna hear this, and many more Americans talk about this. I'm educated in the matter of the history as well as the 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 greasy and and maybe dirty stuff that may pe that people may be scared to talk about. I got a greasy question for you. I got a greasy question for you. Uh huh. So I don't know if it's greasy. I just want some clarity on it. Come on with it, bro. It seems like Claude Green was trying to be the head of the organization. If, brother, let me give you this. Brother, let me give you this, and I gotta go real quick. Yeah, bro. Okay. we can have a long conversation, right? Yeah, yeah, no uh, uh, um, wait before you go. Though, wait, wait, before, agree, wait, before you go, listen. Before you go and leave, um, could you tell us about the organization? I know you're trying to get some blocks, so I saw one time you was trying to do something. Yeah, man, we could oh, talk about that when you before you leave. Oh, okay. So, 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 listen. Um. Not only was it Claude Green, it was Claude Green, it was James Lomax Bay, it was, uh, and I'm going to tell you one thing about Kirkman Bay, he really didn't want the position, but there was a group that wanted to put him in that position, and in, in this lecture that I had, the hijacking of the Morris Science Temple of America, it would be like, I'm like, brother, you are the best suited, and you say, no, I don't want this position, and like, you're going to take this position, and so they was gangsters back then, keep it 100, they was gangsters, they wasn't playing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so it was Claude Green was with a group. It was Aaron Payne L with a group. It was Kirkman Bay. Uh, but like I said, he was forced, uh, from my research, he was actually forced into the position. He really didn't want the position. He actually uh, let, let the position go. And they voted him back in when they reorganized in 1934. Also, you have uh, James Lomax Bay with these four people trying mm -hmm. to get this into position, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I, I, I'm going to say this, and this is me, and this has no bearing on any other Morris Science Temple of America because I respect them all trying to do the best what they, they can do. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the Morris Science Temple of America that the prophet created exists right now idealistically. You see what I'm wow. saying? Wow. I, I don't believe it exists. And so the, wow. group, that, the uh -huh. group that I am working with, the Morris Science Temple of America, and we brand ourselves the Noble Temples, uh, we are working towards building exactly from the model that the prophet left for us. That's what we're working towards. So is there, and, 
as we build this model from the example that the prophet left for us, we also are going to really put out this history that people are not aware of. Is there, and we're going to put out the controversial topics that the people are scared of. Is there Absolutely. a charter or is there a charter and incorporation that's in place that, that seems to be an issue? Like who, who owns more? What's no, the other? Mm -hmm. The prophet Noble Drew Ali teaches us that the door of religious freedom swings open and anyone can walk through as they seem fit. That's fictitious. That's that's crazy. That's what they've been used to hold people captive, that you have to be under me, that you have to be a part of me because I own this. You cannot own religion in the United States. You know that and I know that. Yeah, so that's, but no, no, that's but the what, they say, what they say, what they could do is, is, is a lawsuit like they used to do against the Freemasons. They did it against the black Freemasons where you can't use the names or the paraphernalia or certain things like that. That's why well, I was there's always there, there's already been there's already been two cases that have been decided at the Supreme Court level concerning okay. that and the Morris Science Temple okay. of America. And the judge has already said that that is not possible. No. Mm -hmm. All right, I know you gotta go. I see you answer, but tell I, us. What I gotta go to work, brother. I gotta go work. You're in work before you leave. Forget about Noble Drew Ali. What are you doing, like in ball? How can people help? You got people. Yeah, brother, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah. As I talk about, you know, somebody talk about the mail order packet, the eating of the nails. Forget and all about that. all that right now. What? Are you know, let me get to my point. Let me get to my point. Family, I don't mind. I don't mind addressing all of that. You know what I'm saying? Because I cannot prove or disprove. I would not buy. I mean. In the, in, in the stage of growth and development, who knows what may have happened? But I know from the divine ministry part from 1925 to 1929, I know the model in which we espouse. Here. 2019, so around the country. 2019 so what is Brother Tahaga Bay? Like, how can the people help what you? Saying. What are you doing? This is what I'm ready to say. This is what I'm ready to say. So from 25 to 29, I know what we espouse. And we know that the Prophet Noble Drew asked the Moorish Americans, do you want your own town? So what we did in Baltimore, right where Freddie Gray was killed, we bought a piece of property and got another piece of property on the way. We got a three-story building on the way so we can initiate this Moorish village. And so not so those who are not Moors, how can they help? How can they contact those, you? Those, those who are not Moors need to understand that just like you go to a Chinatown, if you come to Baltimore, you will want to come to a Moorish village and have a vegan meal. You will want to come to a Moorish village. Oh, so you know, right, that's what I'm saying. How, how, how can so, people help? Is there is there a restaurant? So, so you, can hit, you can hit my cash app. You can. I don't do GoFundMe. <laughs> I don't do GoFundMe. But you can also, if you have products, goods, and service, you can email me. So we can. So you can also have them placed in our variety store. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, I mean, it's it's it, it's not just Moorish. Or more is doing this. You know, I, I got red pill and blue pill. Uh, when I'm ready to open the store, bam, their stuff is going to be in there. I got people around the country from different uh, so uh, sectors. Are of you our looking for like? Growth. Are you looking for like construction workers or people to help you with the buildings? Or, or? Well, well, right, well, right now, right now, what I'm doing is. I got a small little crew. I do a lot of the work myself. This is what I do for a living. I do property management. I do home improvement and rehabs. So I do this for a living. You okay. know what I'm saying? And so the point, the point being is, is that right now I'm creating the model. Once I create, once I create the model, get, I get I'm you. going I get to you get the rest. Right. I'm going, no, I'm going to the city and get the rest. No, but I'm see? saying like, if we got, cause I know, I know it's a few people in here right now who are in that Baltimore area. If they want to. Well, yeah, tell them how I'm happy. Huh? Tell them how to Harkabay at yahoo.com. There you go. To Harkabay. If, if people are listening and you're in the Baltimore area and you'd like to help with some of the uh, efforts that uh, Brother Bay is doing, reach out him to him at to Harkabay at yahoo.com. Yeah, and the thing is, when I say hit my cash app, that don't mean you got to send 20 or 100. Some people send five dollars, and that's a paintbrush. You feel what I'm saying? Right, that's what I'm saying. Some people got sweat equity where they could be like, you know what, I might yeah, exactly. need five hours, but I can come and give you six hours worth of labor. Yeah, and so and so exactly, bro. I got a brother. I got a brother right now. He's not a Moorish American, and I could not pay him to help me gut this building out. But what happened was, I could pay. I, I could give him the bare minimum that I could afford out my pocket when I first got the building. But he came every time I called him. But now we're we're in the process right now. I'm putting the first business with the temple, and he's one of the first ones. I don't know if you can see this, but he's one of the first ones that is going to be hired. Um, if I can find it real quick, he's one of the first ones that's going to be hired. These are the flyers that we're passing out around the neighborhood right. for the Moorish gutter maintenance 
uh, business. I used to have a gutter business, cleaning gutters and repairing gutters, but he's going to be one of the first ones that's being hired for that business under the Morris Science Temple of America. So, yeah, you know, sweat labor good. is always good. Good. All right. Good. So, 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 Tahaga, all of that is for the black community that you're oh, the community that you're in, right? Brother, it's for <laughs> it's for our people, all of our people. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you know what I'm going to tell you? I love your black nationalism, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. You are a black nationalist. <laughs> you are a black nationalist, bro. <laughs> hey, we love it. Hey, hey, bro, listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something, man. Hey, bro, I'm going to apologize to you online and your people, brother, because calling you an idiot is unacceptable. Calling you a clown is unacceptable, especially as a sheik and a leader in the community. Uh, but, brother, I get real sensitive when people start talking crazy about the prophet over Drew Ali. You know what I'm saying? Now, yeah. how? let me say this. How this brother bought his message today, you know, he had a little snickers and a little laughs. But you know what? It was straight documented scholarship. It wasn't no fugazi. It wasn't like I had to figure something out. And I'm looking. I'm looking what I have. I'm looking what he had. And so I don't get offended like that. But when I feel somebody trying to take a little sneak shot, at the profit, I get a little worked up, brother. <laughs> yeah, listen, man. We all get worked up. We all get worked up. I didn't get, I didn't get worked up when you said something about the fall away. I was like, okay, I ignored it. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, so somebody say, tell them who explained who our people is. Our people are those who are descendants from the inhabitants of Africa. That's who our people is. Great all answer. those who are is descended from the inhabitants of Africa. That's it. And that's I it. Think that's the perfect. All right, peace and love. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I would love you know, to you're, you're have a conversation in the future. Yes. But I definitely gotta go. Islam. Yes, appreciate it, Islam, brother. Peace, peace. Love, man. peace. All, right. All right. So I think that was a productive way for the conversation to go. Um, I appreciate uh, brother Bay actually coming on here. Um, we stand by the evidence that we presented because it wasn't us, it was the evidence. But once we get past all, this is what I was saying, once we get past all of our various doctrines and get back to black nationalism, brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever you want to label it, but get back to us being able to meet on a level, I think that we'll see a faster progression because what gets uh, becomes a barrier it seems to be like th these doctrines or religions. And, you know, I guess it's cool to say that you don't have a religion, but some people become so indoctrinated and dogmatic and whatever they're pursuing that that becomes their religion. So then you can't see past Kemet. You can't see past <coughs> West Africa. You can't see past <coughs> any of it. And these days and times call for dynamic minds. <coughs> excuse me because we got some decisions that we got to make and moves that we got to make as a collective so leave all that other stuff at the door when it's time to build <coughs> time for me to get some water go ahead alan i get some water yeah so man you know da, 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 <coughs> I mean, he, he ain't denied the information that's what we thought he was going to do because most of them do i mean so like you said too many different factions man but you know that's what this bill was Alan Brown, oh. Alan, Mr. Black Man is God. What are you doing in this picture of one man named Julius Rosenwald? And so, what I'm going to do is just to show you. And this ain't this ain't no jab. This is just history for people to understand where Noble Draw Lee gets. Uh, this concept from I think we're attributing it too much to Marcus Garvey and not to uh, 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 to Booker T. Washington. I mean, much respect to Marcus Garvey, uh, Elijah Muhammad, um, Noble Drew Ali, all those guys in those that circle. But that's like 75, 80, 90 years ago. Yes. Like I would rather do. And of course, with respect, you know, what I'm saying I mean, Team Osiris, we we tend to be a bit brazen. Um, this is about Noble Draw Lee, but I would like to do exposés on some of these so-called um, black national saviors out here today. Yeah. That yeah, are trash. 
they just trash. And they, ain't, they don't even compare to the ones that was at least trying. So what I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will, I'm gonna name no names, but we can get into that. But just let me, let me just get this out first because yeah. this is important. So Carl Green is the butler of this man named Julius Rosenwald, and I just want, I think I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> I want people to see who Julius Rosenwald is. Julius Rosenwald was an American businessman. He is best known as part owner and leader of Sears, Roebuck, and Company, which is a Chicago. Bay, uh, a company that was a Chicago company. And so the, the importance is, is re here and for us, okay, he's best known as a part owner and leader of Sears, Roebuck and Company and for establishing the Rosenwald Fund, which donated millions in matching funds to support the education of African-American children in the rural South. Claude Green, who was Noble Drew Ali's business partner, was this man's butler. And so what does that mean? This is important because when you go and you look at the people surrounding Noel Drali, what you will find is that many of them were Tuskegee men. And you will know that Julius Rosenwald was the man, if I type, if I just search a book, I'm sure it's in this article. Here it is. You'll see that he was the one that gave the money for Booker T. Washington to build those schools down south. They were called Rosenwald schools. And what I'll do, I'll just deviate for a second and show you because there's a book if you're interested in a topic. Because this goes back to our funding and how we get a lot of stuff. And that's a whole nother thing that we need to talk about. So if you type in Rosenwald Schools, and uh, where's the book at? These are the Rosenwald Schools. This is what he has doing. You see the, the black children. This is Rosenwald in the middle. And this, see, they're wearing the letters to spell out Rosenwald. So when Booker T. Washington wants these schools to be built down south, like this is for example, I'm sorry I can't get a bigger picture. Um, these are Rosenwald schools that are being built to, to get us educated. Julius Rosenwald is doing the funding for that. This is the book that you want to get right here if you're interested. It's called You Need a Schoolhouse. And I'll see if I can make the image bigger. And you can see on the cover here, this is Julius Rosenwald. Claude Green is his butler and Booker T. Washington. And so what we find is not only his, his Booker T. Washington and Julius Rosenwald, here is the sign, uh, I forget where this one is, but this is for the Rosenwald School. It says the Julius Rosenwald Consolidated School built in 1930 was a combined elementary high school. It brought in African-American students and yada, yada, yada. Julius Rosenwald is the one that is fund funding um, these schools. Right. And so Court Green has that influence in networking because he is his butler. But not only that, let me show you one more thing and show you the connection to why I say we we'll look. I think that we'll, we need to look more toward Booker T. Washington and not Noble Drew Ali. Now, there is a man who was 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 high up in the Moral Science Temple who was a former preacher. And his name is Reverend Moses Jackson, for all those who are interested. He actually had a big church um, in Chicago. And Reverend Moses Jackson, you will find out, was a teacher, I'm trying to find the right one, at um, Tuskegee. There's your connection, once again, with Booker T. Washington, Reverend Moses Jackson, who, see, look, this is he was called the Sheik. Right? Now there's this riot going on. I believe this is the one where the no, where the, yeah, the Morris, Temp Morris Temple Science uh, guy gets killed, and you see here, right where the mouse is going, Moses Jackson, known to other cult members as the Sheik, was recovering from a shoulder wound. This is during the MST MSTA thing in 1929. But when you do the homework on Moses Jackson, like I say, you're gonna find out that he was formerly Reverend. Moses Jackson, who was teaching theology classes at Tuskegee, and I'll show you that. So that same sheik, um, what is this about? Uh, 30, uh, 20, 15, 20 years before he became the sheik was um, Reverend Moses Jackson, and he was teaching classes. Remember the name, Moses Jackson. So you see here, Phelps Hall Bible Training School, 
yada, yada, yada. Phelps is another benefactor. This is why you have a Phelps Hall, many of your HBCUs. But when you scroll down at the bottom, you're going to see right where the mouse is, Reverend Moses Jackson of the Presbyterian Church, Chicago, delivered a special course of lectures during the past term. This is in Tuskegee's Theology School. Moses Jackson at this time is a Christian who's head of this Presbyterian church in Chicago, who then becomes Moses Jackson the Sheik when he gets down with um, the Moore Science Temple years later. My point of saying this is the connections with Court Green and Moses Jackson point to an influence of Booker T. Washington in his nation building, which was shot into the uh, MSTA more than what Marcus Garvey was doing. You understand what I'm trying to say? Everybody don't left me? No, we here, brother. I'm here. I'm but here. Do, do, do no, no, I'm here, bro. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. As far as that, because that's what's going on in, in Chicago. And we didn't bring it up. And Listen, I'm not doing no more jazz or whatever, but there was another organization like Alan mentioned prior to that, which we can show you, which is in Chicago. It's called the Star of Ethiopia. And I think it had influence on how Noble Dry Lee was moving after that because this happens in 1920 and this is in Chicago, right? And so the star of Ethiopia is saying that we're Abyssinians and that uh, we need to go and get our land in Ethiopia, right? Why every time I put this in here, don't want to come up. Um, okay, star order of Ethiopia. And this is this is based in Chicago. And what happens in 1920, this is this crazy part. Let me back up. It's led by a white man. He is the one convincing all the Negroes in Chicago that we really are Ethiopians and we should go to Abyssinia. And I'm going to show you him. His name is R.D. Jonas. This, all, this is about eight, nine years before Drew Ali comes to town to show you the backdrop that he walked into. So this man, if I could the picture clears up and get it bigger. This is the Ethiopian uh, leaders or whatever that came here. See where the one is? That white man is the leader of the star of Ethiopia. His name is R.D. Jonas. Only white man in the picture, I believe. Right? And this other man, this black man. Uh, That's Redding, Redding, right? Redding. So yeah. Redding. That mm -hmm. was, his, that was the, the, his partner. And so what happens is they have a parade dressed like Abyssinians going through town in 1920 on horses, and they end, end up uh, burning the American flag. And this causes a riot where police officers are killed and some other stuff happens. This is 1920. This is one year after the 1919 uh, riots in St. Louis. And this is Grover Cleveland Redden. Who, and this is the leader, this white man, of the Ab, uh, the Star Order of, of Ethiopia that was in Chicago. So why do I say this? So what's, oh man, they got, what is that, onks up in here too? I never noticed that. Oh Lord. Um, um, what happens is this, is this happens in, in Bronzeville, in a, in a black part of town or whatever, and they get wrapped up in this and the police looking for everybody, but the black folks turn against them because they started burning the American flag. Now, what does that have to do with Noble Drew Ali? What you're going to find out is when Noble Drew Ali has that incident at his temple, in the article, if I can pull it up, it'll show you that the members of the Morris Science Temple came from the Star Order of Ethiopia. That's how they got some. This is something I, I got to give this to Harker Bay too, if he don't gab it. But I found Noble Dry Lee had a uh, hauling and moving company in 1926 in Chicago at uh, that Indiana Avenue address. I found that one. I, I'll send that to, to Harker so he got it. <laughs> but um, um, what you call it? So that's what's happening in in uh, Chicago. I just wanted to show y'all that in that incident in 1929. It'll tell you that um, the members, what well, is that the one, Alan, when they called them the voodoo cult? Yeah, they called them the um, voodoo cult. And 
Okay. They was talking about his teachings of nationality, saying that you're not a Negro or colored. Those are names given to you by the European. Right. You Those are, are the Ethiopian. same things that 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 the that or the order of Ethiopia was giving. They was giving you a membership card, as well as you were getting a new name, and you would contribute to this back to Ethiopia um, movement. But in this art, I think this is the one. It'll tell you that the members came from the defunct star order of uh of ethiopia just showing you that connection with his back folks now okay this order has gone now here's a new um one coming up that is in you know planet roots in chicago trying to give us nationality but it does tell you that a lot of the black folks wasn't feeling the fact that they were being called now moors do we have that one? I don't remember which one it was. This Damn, I, I thought it was the voodoo one. Or which yeah. one was it? I can't remember, man. We and this is not this is not a dab or a knock or nothing. This is something that I, you know, something that, that black folks was wrestling with that. Like, wait a minute, we were just Ethiopians a few years ago. Now you coming around telling us we Moors. So there's a this pushback in Chicago and other places with being identified as Moors because of that. Not a knock, just what's in the history it's just interesting to um to to uh examine that's all it ain't like i said this ain't no knocks none of that nonsense this is just what happened and just trying to get some clarity on how black folks in general was moving and navigating through this um wrestling with identity in the midst of trying to get some freedom you know, and one of the hopes, like we said, it didn't limit it to religions. It's the same reason that we lighten our hair and, and, and straighten our hair. We that was an avenue of thinking that our looks would get us some advantage in the system because we was light bright and next to white. Yeah, you know? but I do I do find it interesting that once they burn that flag, every organization has that American flag in it. Like, right. No that, problem. That's what I was getting at now. The, the Moral Science Temple comes up and, and Drew Ali probably wisely take a different approach of saying, look, we're not going to, we know nine years ago that this, this mess that caused here, we're going to be Americans. We're just saying that we're Moorish Americans. And then he gets involved a little bit more and have an influence because um, Claude Green and, and Oscar Dupree's, actually Constant, what's, what's that movement? Uh, um, let me show Constant. Maybe he know what this building is. What was it? The People's Movement, right, Alan? Yeah, People's Movement. All right, let me let me let me show because this is the building where um Clark Green was killed in front of and where um Oscar the Priest um had his officers. Um damn this is like blind people site. Um here's the building right here. Constantly, you know, you know what this building is? It's called the um People's Movement Building. People's Movement Club. Yeah, that's on the south side of Chicago. Right. So this was this is where Oscar the Priest and the other um uh who was it? Either and uh, Jackson and I think Anderson, the, the 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 they had some offices there and Claude Green had an office there as well as they had meeting halls. And so this is how this connection what was going on in Bronzeville, the black black alderman. And Oscar the Priest doing his thing, and then these organizations, the Masons, the Moors, and all those people kind of you know coalesce together. You see what I'm saying? That's what that's what I'm just trying to get yeah, a sense of that's, that's. you know what I'm saying? That's that's what's going on. Like we looked at the Harlem Renaissance, and I gotta look for it. Where's the book on, on Chicago during this period? Because there's a lot of stuff going on in Chicago Where's during the book the on the which it's one? Called Kings. Kings. The story right. of Bronzeville. It's called Kings. Okay. Chicago actually before the dailies, the actual first mayor was a mayor, a black mayor in Bronzeville. Okay. 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 So you will find that in Kings, and it's a lot of empirical data. That's why um, us in Chicago we know about Noble Drawley because we didn't deify the man. <laughs> we didn't turn him into no spook god. We already knew what he was about when we dealt. With him being from the south, he already had ties to go doing with a lot of other people. And people like um um angel investors, that's what we would call them today of European persuasion. So 
when you hear people say sell out and all that stuff, if they understood what Booker T, Noble Drew Ali, and people like him were doing, they will be calling him that today, which I think is ludicrous. But yeah, I, 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 I agree know, with that. But see, there was a um, and I forget the name of the book because we've had this problem going back since the 1700s. This is not a new problem where we're trying to to make our moves, but we don't have the monetary resources a lot of the time. And so we have to look to white benefactors to do things. And we struggled with that. And actually it was the boys doing the Niagara movement who was trying to push out and says, we didn't want the white influence, believe it or not. And that's what kind of caused the Niagara movement to fall apart was they didn't have the, the money to keep it going. Last was Noble Drew Ali of Shriner. Well, um, there's no records of it. Um, was he influenced by it? Yes, you can tell by the name Noble. You can tell about his brother named, um, um, what's his name, Abdul Suleiman, and that this man comes from Egypt and he comes to, uh, he comes to the Prince Hall faction um, to talk to a brother named jay jones i believe and then he's talking to him about um becoming mohammedans and that he has the 96 degree or something Yo, you something know who whatever. i think jay jones is right what's that who? oh you think that's him yep joe you jay know? jones yeah where's I james know. morgan at oh. where's james morgan at he's still in here yeah, John G. Jones. John G. Uh, let me show my screen. It's the potentate that raised our Nova Drali. Yeah, because this is this is something else that we brought out. Um, we looked at the vision in the record to see the Nova Drali really go see Garvey. And no, I ain't, um, oh, y'all on that? I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about that name is on the on the visiting list. John G. Jones went to go see Garvey. No, that name is on there. J. So J. I'm, Jones. I'm showing the screen now, so people can. Somebody put the link in the back in that chat. This is who John G. Jones is. Where's where is James Morgan? Because he can come on here and speak to more clearly on this if he is still in the chat, because he's the grand historian for the Prince Hall Masons. So if he is still in the chat, he can come in. So when they speak to Jay Jones, this is that Jay Jones, and they call him, he's supposed to be the father of bogus masonry. And you can see here that. John G. Jones, that J. Jones was also in Chicago, Illinois. You see what I'm saying? Um, and he sets up all these grand lodges, and then they say that he, he's supposed to have set up these bogus um, masonry lodges. And and was was Jones Jones wasn't responsible for the Shriners, right, Alan? No, no. Yes, he was. I not, thought, oh yeah, that's right. That's the um the Chicago Egyptian World. Shriners, the Black Shriners, right, right, right. Yeah, I, I know mean, that. Uh, they're being called bogus mm -hmm. by the uh, Prince Hall because they do not follow the laws of amity and the fraternal ties to the UGLE, mm -hmm. which is the United Grand Lodge of England. England, uh huh. So John G. Jones followed the original premise of Prince Hall, who had um separated himself and created Africa Lodge Number Four Fifty Nine because he didn't want to be associated with the Grand Lodge of England. And that created a separation and a rift. And so he was called clandestine and irregular because he did not meet the amity requirements, which was paying to the Grand Lodge. He didn't choose to do that. Right, but he wasn't, they weren't, they weren't afforded the full rights. They could only, uh, let me get this right, they could only parade. They couldn't, I don't know if they could raise people or whatever. There were some restrictions on what they could do because they had came through that Irish lodge. It was an Irish lodge up in uh, Boston that they had came through. And you're right, that they were trying to get um, recognition from Ugly, which is the United Grand Lodge of England. And um, there were some issues with that. But eventually they did get that, um, that recognition. And so from that, there was a compact. Where's James? James Morgan can speak on this way more, but there was something that happened where it was a national grand compact. Um, and then yeah, that, Morgan, I know about that causes a million splits within Prince Hall Masonry. That's why today you have so many uh, splits within Prince, uh, Prince Hall Masonry came out of that national grand compact. And then we have to take into account that there's other branches of Freemasonry that are around during the time. Cerno is one, C-E-R-N-E-A-U. And then there was an issue with membership because Albert Pike 
didn't like the fact that he was losing members, so they made it that only one Grand Lodge could exist and eat bait. And that's when you start to see um, lawsuits pop up because Albert Pike had, you know, he was mad that this is going on. They were losing members because of the Civil War and stuff like that, which he was a uh, leader in. I forget what his, his uh, title was. But yeah, that, that whole Freemason will take you down another rabbit hole. I'm going to say this for the record. On the New Black Knowledge channel, you will not see another video about Nobu Jurali. How about that? I am, We do not harp on any subject, and this has been three videos now talking about this, and I am done. I'm moving on and talking about other parts of niggerdom, like we've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to talk about Negroes from the 1800s and uh, blackface and all the other stuff. This is not the channel to come through to see who is NBK bashing on next because we do not. I repeat, that is not our mission or goal. It is just to put out some information so people who are interested can have the opportunities to further their research and their edification about the history of Africans in America and their descendants and in primarily West Africa. But when you know other members come on in, they have the knowledge base like the Houthi and Kaaba and others about Egypt and even Rob Bourne, then that's what they do. I ain't doing that either. You know, you wanna go ask about some Negroes sitting in trees in West Africa? I mean <laughs> <laughs> um, so with all of that said, I mean, unless y'all got anything else y'all want to add, um, please do. Y'all can have some last words before we shut it down. Oh, Lord Abba's here. Let's add him to the chat. Oh, God. To talk. Man. Uh -oh. no, we ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Did you come in? Lord Abba, did you see the um um see what right, we do here? watch the video first because I'm not like I'm done talking about Noble Draw League, man. Come on, man. See, that's what I'm talking about, Danny. Let me tell you something. Can I say something before y'all close up? Yeah, you could do whatever. Yeah. Um, I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm going to say why. Because it's not the popular choice. We have to stop deifying men who just had a vision and a purpose. That was it for Nobel Draw League. He had a vision. He had a purpose. It's over with. It's been over with. It's had nothing to do with attacking Nobel Draw League. As a matter of fact, you put Nobel Draw League in a terrible box with these guys that play with nationality and changing IDs and doing all kind of crooked shit because they want to go around calling some man a god. And that's the problem. And I'm glad that you guys are showing Hey, peace and love, peace and love. I'm going to give um, anybody the opportunity if they want to come in and talk about the show. I haven't done this in a while, but um, here you go, man. The link is in the chat. Anybody want to jump on and holler? We got five to ten minutes. Want to talk about Noble Jolly? I think he did some good positive works. And um, outside of the eating of the nails and crashing through walls and all that craziness. I mean, Noble Jolly did his thing. He did his thing, man. I wish I could do a show on it, how all Chicago gangs are connected. Grow man, 773, come on. Let's drop that knowledge, bro. Don't be holding it back. Grow man, 773, wrote um, something I got to put on the screen. He said, in Chicago, all... Get, Chicago gangs are called moles as Moorish Americans. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Look at this. Lion's time always trolling, man. He's the number one troller. All right, nobody want to jump on? All right, it's this is another series on the Tuesdays. We got Paul Guthrie's coming up. We got Michael Knight Muhammad, Michael Muhammad Knight. 
We got um hold on, I'm gonna tell you right now. We got we got I got a couple of Egyptologists coming up. I got a couple of archaeologists, Egyptologists that be digging up. Got a got a scholar, I got a geneticist, got a Hebrew scholar. I got Bilal Muhammad coming back on. And along with um this gentleman here, um got his name but well, we're gonna we're gonna rock out with the history of islam i want to get to the history of rastafari too gotta get to that so dealing with the Moorish science temple if anybody else want to come drop some knowledge on the moors let me know we here all right family peace and love i gotta go watch my knicks are we good to go hey benjamin when you get a chance email me i'm not i don't know what's going on in haiti to be honest i'm like I live on that rock. I got so much going on. But um, if you want to come on and talk about it Monday, I could put it on the agenda. And um, you could come talk about it. All right? All right. Peace and love, family. Thanks for tuning in, man. Share the show. Like the show. Peace and love. Oh, Sally Howell. That's